so everyone knows what I'm talking about. I'm talking about third-party scripts. It's the most unreliable thing next to PowerPoint on a MacBook Air at a conference. <laughs> and you can find the slides on my website. I'll put them up on SlideShare in, uh, in a minute. So uh, we've probably we all heard that expression, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Now, in computer parlance, uh, the uh, phrase for that is single point of failure. Um, and it's the same idea. If you have a single component in your system, in your integrated system, and that single component fails and brings down the whole system, that's a single point of failure. And in computer architecture, we don't like single points of failure. Most of us think about, I call it SPOF, most of us think about SPOF in terms of hardware architecture. So here's a canonical uh, hardware diagram from Wikipedia, and we see the router, single router in the middle of everything. And if we only have one of those, and it has a hardware failure, the site is down. Similarly, the application server, if you only have one application server, it's a single point of failure. If that goes down, the website is down. So we're familiar with that concept of single point of failure in terms of hardware. What about software? So most people who are working on production websites on the front end can look at this page and spot several single points of failure. How many see them? All right, no one. I see them, I see them every day. Uh, widgets, ads, and in this page I know also analytics. All of those are a single point of failure for this website, Business Insider. Why is that the case? It has to do with blocking. How about that? Isn't that great? Very appropriate? No, no feedback for that? A chuckle or something? It had, there we go. It has to do with blocking. So uh, synchronous scripts, we probably, hopefully by now, all know this. If you load an external script synchronously, Every DOM element below that script tag in the page is blocked from rendering. And browsers have a lot of inconsistent behavior, but they're all unanimous on this. This is true in every browser. So if any of those uh, widgets, analytics, or ads that I highlighted load a script synchronously, they can block the page resulting in this behavior. Now, do we consider this a failure? I didn't have a piece of hardware failover, right? I consider this a failure. This is not a user experience that is gonna keep our users coming back to our site, it's gonna drive them away. That's a failure. How did this failure happen? So they've got several Business Insider, they've got several uh, third-party snippets in their page. They've got Quantcast, but they're loading this script asynchronously. They've got Insert Before in there. They've got uh, Google Analytics, great pattern here, the Google Command Queue, terrible name, GAC. Who thought of that name? GAC. They got the GAC queue going, so they're loading uh, Google Analytics asynchronously. And they've got uh, KISS metrics down there, uh, probably not what you thought initially. Um, and they're loading that asynchronously. And then there's the Twitter Anywhere. And they're loading it synchronously. Script source equals blah. That's not asynchronous, and that's a fail. So, okay, well we know that this could block the page, maybe, if there's a failure. but. Realistically, like how often does that happen? So I call this front-end spoff, and we can find examples of it. In fact, I can give you an example that will reproduce this failure 100% of the time. I'm gonna use web page test to show it. If you don't know that, that's the number one takeaway from this talk. Go to webpagetest.org. I'm gonna test Business Insider, and I notice that it's blocked from rendering for somewhere between 20 and 30 seconds, right? How did that happen? We can see down below where this failure request occurred, and it's for the Twitter Anywhere JavaScript. Why did it fail? And why did it take so long to fail? Well, I did this test from inside China, behind the Great Firewall. And guess what? Twitter.com is blocked. And it doesn't fail right away, it times out. I'm in IE here, and the timeout is 20 seconds. So 20 seconds, this script is taking to time out, and during that entire time, Business Insider is blank. Every user behind the Great Firewall in China, and there's more than a million or two people there, <laughs> is getting this experience. Well, I don't know, maybe Business Insider doesn't care about the audience in China. This is 100% reproducible. Gina, I wrote this blog post when Gina and I were there for Velocity China last December. Um, so, okay, well, how did that come about? Where did the failure occur? Here's the Twitter Anywhere developer page. 
And they've got this in their snippet, right? In their, in their pattern that they're propagating to their users, they're saying, load it synchronously, script source blah. And they're putting it in the head above the body. So remember, every DOM element below the script tag is gonna be blocked from rendering. Well, guess what? The body is below the script tag. So that means everything in the page is gonna be blank. If this times out, and guess what? In China, it times out. So we get this behavior in China, but what about other places? Most of us aren't traveling to China. When we go there, we don't spend a lot of time on Business Insider. How about here in the US? So luckily, I run this project called the HTTP Archive. If you haven't tried it before, that's number two takeaway from today. Go to httparchive.org. And I've got this, I analyze 200,000 websites twice a month, and I've got this big MySQL database uh, at my disposal. So I said, let me try to find some examples of this in the most recent run of these 200,000 websites. So I said, uh, let me select the URL of the page and the web page test ID. HTTP Archive runs on top of web page test. And uh, I'm gonna pull it from the two main tables we have, pages, which is the high level information, and requests, which is every individual request for the page. So I have to join those. First of all, I'm gonna select pages just in the most recent runs, and I'm gonna join the two tables. I'm only gonna look at sites that are ranked in the top 20,000 worldwide. Try to narrow it down, find some more popular sites that experience this problem. And uh, that page has to contain a script that takes more than 10 seconds to load. And the overall page is therefore gonna be blocked from rendering for at least 10 seconds. And I'm gonna group it by page ID. Why did I go through all of this, a keynote with detailed SQL? Because all the code and data is downloadable. You can download this data and do the exact same analysis or other analyses if you want to. So I did this analysis and guess what? I found some examples. So here is uh, I can't read the website. Oh, this is Beta Brands. Top 20,000 website. Uh, it doesn't render for 10 to 15 seconds. And if we look, it's because this request to a Facebook JavaScript file took 14 seconds to download. And it was loaded synchronously, script source equals blah, not async, so it blocks the entire page from rendering. Here's another example. This is a, a big follow, I think. And it's interesting because it's a way of attracting more uh, Twitter followers, but for some reason they're loading Plus One and Facebook, and both of those took over 20 seconds to download, so it blocked the page from rendering. So I don't know, maybe Plus One and Facebook knew about that, and they're trying to mess with Big Follow. But you know, for whatever reason, I don't know why it took 20 seconds, but it did, right? It didn't happen on every website, but it happened in about 0.1% of the websites in the crawl. Here's another one loading something from Glam Media. They're the uh, world's leader in curated social media. They are not the world's leader on high performance third party snippets. <laughs> and here's another one that's got everything in there, Facebook and I think some Google and some Twitter. And for some reason, they all took you know, five to, to 10 seconds to download, blocking the rendering in the page. So this is a problem, it does occur. Outages occur, hiccups in the internet occur, and when that happens with third-party scripts that you've put into your page in a synchronous way, your site is gonna go blank for your users. And this has happened in the past, there's news articles about it, um, and it's gonna, it happens every day and it's gonna continue to happen. So this has been a cautionary tale of woe and foreboding, but it doesn't have to be that way. There's a sunny side to this picture. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so. <laughs> if you wanna hear the sunny side, you gotta to come to my talk at 11.50. But between now and then, I want you to ask yourself a question. What's your website's weakest link? I wouldn't be surprised if it's on the front end. All right, thank you. <laughs>